In today's video, we are going to study about uh, structures of proteins. There are four structures, primary, secondary, tertiary and quaternary. Okay. So in this structures, first of all, let's see what are proteins. Proteins are, uh, you know, they are the bodybuilding blocks. Uh, they are the important uh, component of our diets. Uh, diet. Uh, proteins and polypeptide major differences, uh, molecular weight when it is above 10,000, we term them as proteins. And if it is less than 10,000, it is polypeptide. And uh, proteins and polypeptides, what is common in proteins and polypeptide is the peptide linkage, that is CONH. So proteins on hydrolysis, uh, give hydrolysis proteins on hydrolysis gives you what amino acids and amino acids when you combine they give proteins okay so proteins are present in hair bones skin enzymes are proteins right so let's study about the structure we know that proteins are made up of amino acid poly, um, or we can say proteins are polymers of amino acid and uh, this is the peptide linkage which is formed by when amino acids react with each other. So primary structure is the basic structure of the protein where you have a sequence of amino acids attached to each other. And this is a covalent background. You can see this is the protein uh, polypeptide change. This is the, uh, the, this is the peptide linkages over here and these are the side chains. Okay, so it's a covalent backbone uh, containing various side chains and primary structure gives you information about the nature of amino acids, which amino acids are attached, how many units of amino acids are attached to the polypeptide chain. It also gives you the sequence of amino acid, whether a particular amino acid is repeated after certain number of amino acids. So it gives you basically arrangement of amino acids. Okay. R groups or these are the side chains. So these are whatever you can see these groups over here. These are your side chains. So side chains are situated alternately in front and back so that the crowding becomes less and the whole polyamide chain is paler, planar. Now, after the primary structure, suppose you fold this primary structure or you attach two primary structures to each other, you get the secondary structure. The secondary structure is of two types. One is the alpha helical structure and beta pleated structure. So there are the uh, secondary structure differs, uh, uh, deals with different conformations of polypeptide chains, how the chains are arranged. So the chains can be coiled which gives you the alpha helical structure or the chains can be situated in a pleated form. So it gives you a beta pleated structure and there is a hydrogen bonding between NH and CO. So uh, it, it, it looks like this. So this is CO of one polypeptide chain and this is hydrogen uh, NH bond of another polypeptide chain. So there is hydrogen bonding between the, uh, between the two chains and this also increases the stability. So this is our first beta pleated structure. Now you can see over here, I've written anti-parallel and parallel. So what does that anti-parallel and parallel mean? In this structure, if you look at this, both the nitrogens are in front of each other. So we call this as N-terminal. This is also N-terminal. So both N-terminals are in front of each other. Whereas this nitrogen is N-terminal of one polypeptide chain and this is the C terminal of another polypeptide chain. So C and N are together. So, together. so this is anti-parallel. When both the sides are, both the N terminals are together, we call it as what? Parallel. So here the beta pleated looks like you can see how it is arranged. It looks zigzag. So the in beta pleated uh, uh, sheets, the chains lie side by side in a zigzag form. And you can see in between the two chains, there are hydrogen bonds. So these hydrogen bonding increases the stability of the chains. They keep them fixed in that coil structure or the beta pleated structure. In beta pleated structure, you have parallel and anti-parallel. So in beta pleated structure, which hold each other uh, together, align parallel or anti-parallel, same direction. This is same direction. You can see all CO are lying on the right hand side. It's like you can see it's parallel, right? And then this is anti-parallel. So simple in simple words, you can say N terminal of one is in front of C terminal. Then it is anti-parallel. N terminal of one chain when it is in front of N terminal of other, it is parallel. Okay. And the R groups of the amino acids, all these R groups are lying outside. So 
they don't take part in that hydrogen bonding or uh, because they are lying outside uh, then there is less crowding so this increases the stability of these chains example of beta pleated structure is keratin uh, which has parallel beta pleated structure and sulfagbroin has a anti parallel structure similar to this is alpha helical structure where you can see uh, when the side chains are large you get a coiled like structure staircase a spiral staircase like structure dna like structure okay in these structures also you can see there are hydrogen bonding and all the r groups are lying outside the chain right and because they are lying outside the chain they don't take part in the bonding like um, the crowding is less so stability of these chains is quite high right and uh, you can have right handed coil and left handed coils so you can see this and uh, what exactly that means is when uh, you have uh, all amino acids of the same configuration uh if they are in of the same kind of configuration so for right handed uh, they will be having l configuration so when they are in same configuration you will get right handed sort of structure okay all r groups are lying outside the chain outside the helix hence there is less crowding and they are not involved in h bonding this maintains the stability every turn you can see is 3.6 residues of amino acids so there are 3.6 uh, residues or amino acid sequences present in each turn and the diameter the whole diameter if you look at this this whole diameter of the chain is 10 angstrom unit examples of uh, alpha helical structure are myosin in muscles part of keratin is also alpha helical hair wool nails which all contain keratin they have alpha helical structure next structure is the tertiary structure uh, when the primary uh, when the secondary structure comes closer when it coils again when it gets folded you get a tertiary structure and this is a three dimensional structure okay and in this three dimensional structure because of extra folding the groups come closer to each other now because the side chains and the groups are coming close to each other the number of bonds also go on increasing so in secondary structure there was only hydrogen bonding between the two chains now there are extra bonding so what are the extra bonds it has hydrogen bonds it has disulfide you can see ionic bonds are there hydrophobic interactions are there van der waal forces of attractions are there all these extra bonds also stabilize the whole structure tertiary structure here the peptide chains are not uniform some part are coiled into helixes some part are in the form of sheet some parts are looped so they are having regular arrangement because of big structures or because of peptide chains and now this tertiary structure uh, depending upon how the uh, chains are folded you get two shapes of proteins one is the fibrous protein and one is the globular protein okay fibrous is nothing but thin light filament like like your hair hair contains keratin keratin is fibrous protein okay and globular example it's like spherical like your hemoglobin or egg yolk these are all examples of spherical proteins right and properties also you can remember our keratin our hair hair is not soluble in water right so fibrous proteins are not soluble in water whereas egg is soluble in water so for globular proteins are soluble in water so these are uh, again one classification of proteins and the last structure is the quaternary structure which is the most complex structure of proteins so you can say primary folds to give secondary secondary folds to give tertiary and then the uh, last is quaternary which is the most complex structure where you have different polypeptide chains two or more chains are there held together each chain is called as subunit or protoma and the manner in which the subunits are arranged in the space this is called as quaternary structure because more folding is there because the groups are coming closer to each other even in this structure there are extra bonds like hydrogen bonding is there electrostatic forces of attractions are there hydrophobic interactions van der waal forces of attractions are there and all these forces also increases the stability of the quaternary structure examples of quaternary structure are hemoglobin which is a tetramer which is made up of four subunits of protein chains and uh, collagen is example collagen is trimer so this is your quaternary structure you can see there are so many uh, types of bondings because of the coiled nature or so many polypeptide chains coiled into each other
so this was about structure of proteins primary simple sequence of amino acid two uh, chains of pr primary when they join they give either helical or beta pleated structure a uh, secondary structure of protein can be a combination of beta pleated and alpha helical structure it has a hydrogen bonding when the secondary structure folds it gives you a tertiary structure where the bonds go on increasing because there is interaction between the side chains also and at the end uh, when two or more uh, protein structure polypeptide chains are coiled into each other you get quaternary structure which is the most complex structure so this was all about structure of proteins thank you